Hey DLRs, what's going on? Mike Force with the Mike Force channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking Mercruiser Outdrive or Stern Engines. This is part five of the upper unit rebuild, part four scrolling above. However, we are going to pick up right where we left off. Let's get started. All right, DLRs at the workstation now. I'm picking up right where we left off. We set the preload on the bearing and gear and U-joint assembly and shaft. So definitely check that out in the event that you want step-by-step -step guidance on how to do that. Here is our upper gear or vertical gear and our upper unit. First thing we'll do, I've got Quicksilver Marine Grace 24C. I'm going to use that. This is your little shifter. As you can see, it moves pretty freely at this point. However, I'm going to grease both the inner portion here where the cotter pin goes into and down here. Have some paper towel readily accessible and no need to overkill it. Just apply some grease around the actual shifter bar in the cotter pin as well as that washer. Again, this will go a long way over the months and years that this shifter is in use when you're out on the water. To the underside, and again, just apply some grease. I'll put a little more on there. I now have the upper unit resting on the stand, and coming down below, I've added additional grease right here. And as you can see, it's in there pretty good. And you can basically rotate it and move it around a little bit, get that grease inside that little hole that the gear itself goes into. And from here, coming up top, we are going to install the vertical gear to the vertical gear. And I want to talk about this little carrier right here. If you reference your schematic, here is our upper unit. Starting with number 25, we've got our gear, bearing, and carrier. And shifting over to the actual vertical gear itself, here's your gear, here's your bearing. It spins freely, and there's the carrier. So basically, this goes inside the engine or upper unit, and that carrier houses the bearing. And I want to show you where that is in the upper unit coming inside and here is the original carrier. You'll need a press to get that out. We are actually going to keep that in there and we've cleaned up any and all scuffs or scoring. And here's that little opening that the lower unit pushes the gear oil up into the upper unit and properly lubricates the upper unit's bearings. So our brand new carrier, we are not going to use. Again, that's right there and it's inside your upper unit. If yours looks good, you may just want to use your original one. Now the next part, personal preference. Some people flip the vertical gear upside down and apply some Quicksilver 24C in the underside here. As you can see, that is the spline area, and that is where the shaft on your lower unit feeds into. What it does is it comes through the lower oil seal down below that we installed and meets inside here. And with that said, some people apply the grease at this point, as opposed to having grease on the shaft of the lower unit. And when it comes time to shift the lower unit in place and secure it to the upper unit, that alleviates grease from getting anywhere in the event that you are off-centered or that upper portion of the shaft touches any other parts. However, again, personal preference, we are going to apply a little bit of grease inside the lower unit spline area of the vertical gear. And I said little, we're not going to overdo it. And when it comes time to Resecure the lower unit and shift that up in place. We may also put a little bit of grease on the new spline of the new shaft. And again, just a little bit. I'm not going to overdo it. And do your best not to make a mess. As you can see, not much on my finger. It's going in. And I'm just going to lubricate the spline area. And I will clean up any excess grease before installing it. What I did next was grab the old vertical gear. I'm going to flip that upside down and compare it to the new gear and bearing. And as you can see, the part that we just oiled, the inner spline, very dirty and rusty. If you are using your original vertical gear, that has got to be cleaned off to a point where it looks like this. Or this is going to eat your new seal alive, and that is rusty and very gritty. So with that said, if I use this old gear in this condition, that rusty, gritty finish on this portion of the gear shaft, it is going to tear apart that new oil seal we installed. And that is definitely not what we want. I'm going to set that old vertical gear aside, and we are going to apply some 24C grease to this portion right here basically the part that was very rusted on the old gear. And DIYers, not a lot, just a little bit, a very fine, thin layer of grease around this portion of the shaft. Don't get it in the gears. You will oil that with the gear lube in the next step. And this is going to help alleviate this portion of the shaft eating the new seal alive or prematurely failing it. 
Again, just a light coat, and I gotta clean that up. Next DLRs, I'm going to lubricate the gear with the gear lube, and this is the SEA 90. And again, this is the actual gear lube that you put into the lower unit that then ultimately feeds upstream or up the system to the upper unit to properly lubricate these gears, both on the vertical gear here, as well as the gears on your U-joint assembly. And I'm going to just open up the cap and get a little bit on my finger and basically lubricate and some people use other means of lubrication, but I like to use what is going to be the actual lubrication when the engine is put back together and running. And I might actually just pump it as I move it in to that little slot. And go slow and be precise. Don't overdo it, no need to make a mess, but you will get a little bit dirty now that I've greased that, go ahead and spin the bearing. Work that lubrication into the bearings itself. And that is very nice. And real quick, a close-up of the Mercury High Performance Gear Lube SAE90. I might have said SEA, it's actually SAE. And what we are going to do, again, this is all lubricated and greased. We are going to grab the vertical gear and shift it into the upper unit. And as you can see, it is going to go down and align it properly with that lower seal. And it should go in very conveniently. And you can give it a couple rotations. And everything looks good. There is clearance, as you can see. There is no binding, there's no scraping, there's no scoring. And we are satisfied with that. And that is what it looks like so far. And it is time to reposition or shift the u-joint assembly and bearing and gear set in place and secure it with that retainer nut we are going to clean off the thread both the retainer nut and we did our best earlier in the project to clean this thread you want that clean we are going to apply some anti-seize to the thread of the retainer nut and if it's been a few days or weeks since you actually set your preload and your o-ring is slightly dry go and grab a little dab or two from your gear lube and re-oil or lubricate this o-ring but before we insert that it's very important to insert your spacer and shims in our case here's our part number let's go ahead and open it again first the shim and spacer and align them in there properly shift them all the way back to the absolute rear mating point of the inner part of this upper unit now we can position the u-joint assembly and shaft and insert it and as you shift this bearing and gear in place do your absolute best to do it as straight as possible and it should slide right in just like that what i'll do now i've got the anti-seize and i will dab a little bit on my finger as you can see here and i will just work the thread of the retainer nut the entire way around to make it easier for the retainer nut to come off next time i service the upper unit and DIYers, as you can see, I am not going over the top with this anti-seize. I'm just applying a thin layer throughout the entire thread, as you can see here. No need to overdo it and get messy with it. What I will do next is secure the retainer nut, and I may have to carefully maneuver the U-joint accordingly. And as you can see, it caught there. If it's not catching, again, turn it counterclockwise, allow the thread to reset, and then turn it clockwise until you can tighten it. We'll hand tighten it from here. It spins pretty easily, and I'm doing my best to grab the outer teeth as opposed to the thread where the anti-seize is, again, to alleviate a mess. Once it's hand tight, I'll grab the spinner wrench, and I'll come up under the shaft and maneuver until it's all the way onto the retainer nut. And there it is, and turn it clockwise. and continue tightening this until the spinner nut is properly seated. Here it is, DIYers, and again, I can't stress enough how important it is to carefully and slowly insert the entire gear and bearing assembly straight in the upper housing. In the event that you get bound up, do not force it. Immediately pull it back out, realign it, and shift it back in. If you are having trouble shifting it in and it gets stuck and you're having trouble getting it out, carefully remove it and then use a Scotch-Brite pad to polish out the inner portion of this housing. And when it's all said and done, you should be able to move it, as you can see. I can just move it by hand. Let me do it with my right hand here. See that? And the sound you're hearing, that's basically what you want to hear. Those are the gears inside, properly mated and connected, and 
that is what you want. Take a minute, double check everything is properly completed with this portion. Now it's time to install the upper cap. I've got a new O-ring and I've got four new bolts. I took a quick minute and cleaned up the workbench to give you a better presentation. And here is the top portion with the original bolts and the O-ring. There's the new bolts. There's the new O-ring and a spacer and carrier. Let's talk about these real quick. These are the new ones. And if you reference your schematic or ours in this case, here's the cap, there's the bolts, there's the O-ring, there's the spacer, the carrier, and the bearing onto the shaft. Well, the bearing's already pressed onto the shaft by the local marina. I cannot take that off. And the carrier, as well as spacer, that is referenced right here and here in the schematic, it's already pressed in the underside or inner side of the cap, and I cannot take that out without the proper tools. If your carrier is still in really good condition, go ahead and use it. No need to go through the hassle of removing this and inserting the new spacer and carrier. If you see any scoring, scratches, or gouges, and polishing it out does not help, well, maybe it's time to replace the carrier as well as the inner spacer. However, we are going to remove this O-ring. I might need a little pick tool. Nothing fancy, just a pick tool from my local AutoZone. Do your best not to score any portion. Just grab that original or old and used up O-ring. Go ahead and remove it. Set that aside. Don't get the old one confused with the new one. I will now pick this up and remove the bolts. And I'm going to clean the surface of this entire inner portion of the cap. Spent a couple minutes and polished it up. As you can see, there's still quite a lot on there. And this is pretty old. So what's on there is basically there forever. And in regards to the mating surface of the upper unit, be very cautious if you are going to clean the surface of that. Because as you do that, the last thing you want is shavings going down into the gear housing. That would not be good. What I'll do next is grab that 24C grease and apply it to the new O-ring and properly seat that on this part. Again, the 24C Quicksilver grease. Pop the cap off, just get a little bit on my finger as you can see here, close that up, shift that to a side, and go ahead and lubricate the O-ring. Get it all greased up. And this will also help this O-ring properly seat when you secure it to the upper unit. Just like that. I'll clean my hands before I show you. Here's a better view of it. And as you can see, not too much grease, but enough grease to help the O-ring properly seat when you secure this to the upper unit. I'm also going to use anti-seize on the four bolts that secure the cap to the upper unit. All four bolts are properly anti-seized and you are going to need a torque wrench. And in our case, with our serial number, Alpha 1 Gen 1, it is going to be 12 pounds torque on those bolts that secure the cap or case to the upper unit. And that is to properly set the bearing inside the carrier of the upper case and alleviate you from over tightening it. Because in the event that you over tighten it, you could mess up your entire project that you've worked so hard to get to this point. Again, 12 pounds. I will pick this up and carefully align it properly and rest it in place. And we will now insert all the bolts and hand tighten them only. As you shift this cap in place, you may need to give it some gently taps to properly Push it down flush with the lower portion here, but don't overdo it. Again, if it's not going on and down flush with this portion, don't force it. From here, grab your bolts. Again, they have been properly anti-seized. Make sure you do not cross thread them and hand tighten. I'll do this one and then I'll come over here, secure that one. Again, they should screw in very easily. If they're not, back the bolt out by turning it counterclockwise, reset the thread and align it and screw it in. Before the torque wrench, I'm just going to tighten it with a regular ratchet. This is again a 3 8 size, and once I get that tension, I will stop and transition to the torque gun or wrench. I've got my torque wrench set to 12 and I'm going to screw these in in sequence until they're at 12 pounds. As you heard there, that will click, that click, that click, and that clicked. 
and I'm not sure if this will be helpful, but I want to show you a closer view of the actual torque wrench as it hit that 12 pounds. See that? That's what you're looking for. Here's the finished product. Again, flush, as you can see. And from here, give it a couple revolutions just to ensure nothing is bound up and it is rotating efficiently and as designed. And that is good. And DIYers, hopefully you're still with us. It is now time to pressure test the upper unit. And that will be the next video scrolling above right now. Definitely join us there as we complete the final step of this upper unit, which again is a pressure test. From here, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Workbench is getting a lot of use. Real quick DIYers before I forget, I've got three machine cut grooves on the actual shaft and this third one just above the spline came later on down the line. That is a new design for the new greasable couplers inside your engine. And my original shaft did not have this cut. And what we'll do is down below in the comment section as well as the description section, we are going to post a link that we dive deep into the explanation or comparison or difference between the new design and the original design shaft that does not have that machine cut groove. Definitely check that out. However, Coming up here, in our case, you can see just two O-rings, but again, that is the original OEM. And coming to our kit here, you've got a large one, you've got two smaller ones that are the exact same size, and then you have a largest one. This one right here, which is the second largest, will go right there. The two that are smaller than this one and the same size, those are your two O-rings that go right inside these cutouts. And this large O-ring, will come later on in the project and that will actually go right over here when we insert and install this gasket to the upper unit. O-rings are now installed and I found the friendliest way to do this is install that large O-ring first and once that is installed there is no longer that large or deep gap or cutout and you can take the two smaller O-rings slide it up the spline and shaft and it will conveniently hop right over that large O-ring and continue rolling them all the way up to the top cutouts.